Hey, good morning guys. Touch coming at you. 8.05 on Saturday, September the 22nd and uh, cool morning. Feels like fall 10 degrees Celsius out here today. Anyway, a good morning to be out here sanding. So we've uh, just flipped the bonnet over. We're just about to unmask it. I was just taking a quick look at my, uh, my edges here to see how I did as far as my paint is concerned. And it looks not too bad. It's a little... Uh, a little gray over here, a little primer, so I might have to do a little, little touch up in this corner over here, but uh, we can definitely live with it for now. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Maybe a little gray over here too, but uh, yeah, so we'll unmask it. I think the, um, the masking looks like it held up, but we'll uh, see if we've got any overspray that we need to clean up uh, before we flip it over and start the uh, wet sanding. So I've got the uh, 1500 grit uh, as the first step, the 2000 grit as the second step. Then we'll finish with the 2500, and then we'll get into the compound, and we'll then we'll get into the uh, the finishing uh, swirl remover. So uh, I'll show you those uh, products when I get to them. We've got a bucket uh, filling up with water over here, so we can get our sandpaper soaking. So we'll uh, unmask the bottom of the uh, of the bonnet and uh, flip it back over, and we'll get to work. Okay, we're all set up for wet sanding. We're using uh, this uh, sort of softish kind of block for my wet sanding. We'll just wrap the paper around that. We've got a sponge handy to keep the panel wet. Um, usually I put a drop of dish liquid in there just to help it uh, the sandpaper slide a little bit and uh, we'll make sure we keep our sandpaper clean and uh, we'll probably be done in an hour or two so uh, let's get to it. Okay we're pretty much sanded down now with 15 grit and uh, I'm just checking to see if I've got any shiny spots left Generally what I do is I wet sand and then I get a rubber squeegee and uh, wipe off the water and have a quick look at the surface. And if you see any shiny spots that means you've missed that area and you need to go back and re-sand it. So it's looking pretty good so far. Um, I think I've got a few little uh, little lows actually that will probably show but uh, actually it doesn't look too bad. It looks like it's leveling out not bad. I still have that one speck of dirt here that I shaved the top off of. You're going to be able to see a little speck there. but nothing critical. There's actually a little, I think it was a little red spider that got into my clear that I've been trying to sand out here. But I think he's under the bottom layer so I think he's gonna stay. Anyway, uh, we're soaking up the uh, 2000 grit. That'll be the next step so we'll uh, get onto that shortly. Alright, we've got her sanded down to uh, 2500 grit and uh, we've just rinsed it off with fresh water. We'll squeegee that off and then let it dry and uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll do the uh, the buffing with the machine. I'll show you the next uh, steps. I've got to run some errands first. I'm going to go visit uh, my buddy Ellen at his shop and uh, he's going to do a little bit of work for me on my convertible top for my 1960 TR3A. It's got a little small hole in it so we're going to see if we can uh, maybe patch that up a little bit and I've got a, a grommet that's pulled out of one of my tonneau covers so we'll see if we can stitch that in there as well. It looks like uh, for my trip to the trials in North Carolina uh, next week, it looks like the weather is not going to be cooperating with us. I've been checking the forecast fairly far out, obviously, but uh, I've been checking the forecast for uh, areas like Knoxville and like Asheville, uh, which are apparently the two closest major cities to uh, Fontana Dam, North Carolina, and the weather does not look promising. I think it's 90%, 80% chance of rain um, all days when we're down there. Even while we're traveling, the, uh, the weather doesn't look great. So hopefully that changes, but uh, I'm going to need a convertible top, it seems. So we'll make sure that we get that uh, hole in the top uh, repaired. And we'll make sure we have a functioning uh, tonneau cover as well, just in case we might uh, need that while we're down there and away from home. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're at the Masters. Look at Morgan. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're in the, uh, the sewing shop, and here's the... Uh, the two issues I have, so I've got a little, uh, what looks to be like a little puncture hole in my convertible top for the 60TR3. That's one issue that I need to have repaired. So it's a pretty small hole, but significant if it's raining out. You're going you're gonna to get wet for sure, uh, especially if you're the passenger, because that's probably where about the passenger sits. So I'm less concerned, because I probably won't have a passenger, but I, I still probably need to get that fixed. And the other problem is on my tonneau cover. I've had a grommet pull out here. You can see the material just split a little bit. So we've got the grommet over here that pulled out. So we're going to try to try to fix. It looks like it had a bit of work done here before. Actually, there's some stitching already in here, so it's probably just ripped again. And, uh, and we'll try to put that grommet back in there. We'll probably rescue it, 
probably um, try to unpeen that to save this grommet so we can reuse it. So that's it for now. Oh, and I'm gonna try to get uh, my strap shortened for the trailer. Since these are 15 foot straps and I need about five foot straps, there's an awful lot of extra strap laying on the floor that I don't particularly like. So I figured we could cut them and just run them through the machine just to, uh, just to sa uh, save the ends. Anyway, that's it. We'll come back. Okay, grommet is uh, back in there nice and tight and it did some new stitching for me there. And we've got the hole there we go, hole stitched up so nobody's going to get wet. But it's not going to rain, I don't think. So, yeah, looks perfect. So we're good to go on our trip and not get wet. <laughs> Alright guys, it's coming up to 2.30 and we're back in the garage, just about ready to uh, buff the hood. So we've got our Presta two-step uh, polishes out. Um, well, actually, one's a compound, one's a finishing polish. Uh, we finish that up with a fast wax at the end. We'll probably apply that after we put the stripe on. We've got our foam pads here uh, ready to go. We've got our buffer over here. Uh, thanks, Sean, for dropping that off and borrowing that from a buddy of mine. Um, so we're ready to go, I think. Everything looks good on the hood, and uh, it'll look better in about uh, an hour from now. We'll bring it back. We're going to start using a green pad, actually. This is a light cut pad. And we've got our compound here, so we're going to start off with that. We'll finish with a, uh, a polishing pad. Um, again, uh, we've got to be careful around the edges. We don't want to burn any edges, so we're going to take it slow and uh, do the best job we can. We definitely don't want to have to uh, repaint this. If we burn an edge, we'll be in big trouble. So anyway, we'll take it easy. All right, guys, we have the uh, center of the hood all buffed, and it looks uh, pretty good. We are now about to do the more difficult part, which are the side parts. So we got to be a little bit more careful. So that turned out pretty well. There's a few little, uh, few little dimples here and there uh, from my spray painting that I can't get out, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. So it would have been nice if those dimples had cooperated and they sort of laid out underneath my stripe. But uh, I guess a few of them wanted to be a little bit more difficult than others. So anyway. I can't complain. I'm happy with that. So, uh, like I said, we'll move on to the difficult bits. Alright guys, that's been a couple hours spent uh, buffing the bonnet. And I think it looks uh, pretty good. Again, it's a little bit difficult in these uh, areas down here. I've got a small pneumatic uh, buffer that I used uh, in some of the tight areas. But it uh, definitely doesn't work as good as the full-size buffer. So. We sort of gone back and tried to touch those areas up as well. Whatever area we could reach with the big buffer, we tried to use it. And for the uh, limited space areas, we used that little pneumatic buffer. Anyway, I think it looks pretty good. So I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, <coughs> pin, the uh, caps for the hood pins back in. We'll polish those up a little bit and we'll put them back where they need to be. And then we'll get ready to put it back on the uh, car tomorrow. All right, the guides for the uh, hood pins are now installed, so they look good. Uh, and the next critical step, and I keep saying critical, um, <laughs> anything critical is where the hood can get damaged. And uh, the next critical step is putting it back on the car. So hopefully we can get it back on the car without any damage. And then I'll be very happy once it's back on the car and then I can do the striping. Uh, so that's it for now. We'll uh, figure out what we're going to do next. We're going to have to pull the car out of the trailer at some point. And uh, that means we'll probably have to clean the garage up in order to get it back in the garage because the garage is an absolute mess. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, we'll concentrate on cleaning the garage up this evening and get ready to pull the car out of the trailer tomorrow. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.